Hey guys, we are live. It is another Mixing Wednesday. Let's see what can possibly go wrong this week. Uh, there's always something. Oh, something did go wrong already. My TV screen broke, so I've had to borrow one. So welcome to another Wednesday Mixing Live. In this week's video, we are going to be mixing the bass parts in my song, Angel. I'm trying to kill two birds with one stone by mixing live to showcase to you guys some uh, mixing tips and tricks that I've accumulated over the years I've been doing this and also mix my song at the same time. Welcome. If you're new to the live stream, uh, we're going to be doing this every week on a Wednesday night at 7 p.m. sharp, which I believe is 2 p.m. Eastern Seaboard time. Now, I'm not going to be here next week. I am away, but I have scheduled a video from one of these live streams to be replayed uh, next Wednesday. What I'm doing is I'm taking small clips of these live streams and I'm editing them down into concise tutorials in a series called Clips. And one of those is going to be going out on Wednesday. In this live stream, I'm featuring a plugin of the week. And this week's plugin of the week is going to be the new API Vision Channel Strip from Universal Audio. And I'll talk through that in a little bit more detail when I pull it up later in the live stream. But they're combining a preamp, a sweep filter, a gate and expander, a compressor and a limiter, and a graphic EQ all into one plugin to try and emulate the API analog series desks that Universal Audio do so well. This week features the bass parts from my friend Jack Stevens. Uh, Jack is a London-based session bass player, and he actually runs a YouTube channel. Bassman Jack uh, interviews London's top session players, and I'll give you a little screenshot of what he does here. That's his YouTube channel. Go and give Jack a subscribe. And basically what he does is interviews the top London session bass players uh, to give you a world of insightful knowledge um, of all the London session bass players. So if you're a bass player, go and check out Jack's channel. It really is good. Oh, I've disappeared. All right, so here we have the Logic session. I've done an overview video of this entire session before. That was episode one of these live streams. And last week we mixed the drums. So if you want to check out an overview of the session to see how I've organized everything or not so organized everything and how I've mixed the drums, you can go back and check those episodes out as well. But for now, let's dive into the bass guitar. So we have three bass guitar microphones. We had the first one I had an Sennheiser MD421 and I'm going to put on a little video of my studio there for you which is that's my drum kit that I'm recording on at the moment it's not actually mine but it's a wonderful kit and that is the MD421 in question that I had on the bass cab and we also had the Jay-Z V47 now this microphone picture is the V67 but they are almost identical so there's no way you'll be able to tell the difference unless you've got two of them in your hands and we also had a DI as well uh, which was useful. It's always useful to have a DI clean sound coming straight out of the amplifier. Um, Jack uses an Aguilar cab and head, which sounds great. So let's have a listen to each of these microphones. And I need to get rid of this. Uh, we have the bait. So this is the 421 placed in front of a cab. And what I like about that mic is it just captures a full controlled tone, as do all Sennheiser microphones. But this mic's particularly capturing the clicky top end because three kilohertz is really important for making the bass stand out in a mix, in my experience. This is the Jay-Z V47, which is a large diaphragm condenser mic. But if you look at the um, EQ curve, it captures quite a lot of bottom end, which is really tasty. So it's a thicker, fuller sound, and I'm looking forward to blending those in. And then we had the bass DI, which is straight out of the Aguilar head. Forgive me, I didn't make a note of the model, and I forgot to upload the picture for the uh, visuals. Now, I should note, as I have done in all these sessions, that on the master bus, there is some processing. If you want to know what the processing on the master bus is and why I've used a top-down mixing approach for this song, go and check out episode one. And episode one, I talk about all this um, and I talk about, go through which plugins I've used and why and how they affect the sound of the overall track. 
So the first thing I'm going to do with these three, as you've seen, which I've already done, is I've sent them to a bus. So I'm selecting each one by pressing shift and click, and then I'm sending these to bus seven, which is my designated bass guitar bus, because instead of going through each individual microphone at this stage, I just want to treat all three at the same time, treating all three of them as if they are an instrument themselves. And then if I need to go in and tweak some of them differently, which I will do, because I do have a mixing technique for mixing the low end in one mic and the top end in another mic, we'll go back in and do that a little later. Let's listen to how these sound in the context of a mix, which is arguably the most important place to listen to them. All right, so yes, the bass is a little hot in the mix, but I'm aware a lot of people are gonna be watching this on devices such as iPads, phones, and computers, so the bass isn't gonna cut that much. So it'll probably be a little bit higher than usual. So what I wanna do on that is isolate it and listen to it on its own again. So in a mix, it's sitting quite well, actually. I'm quite happy with that already. I don't think loads needs doing to it, which is good. It's always a good sign of recording something well. As bass tones go, I think that's pretty good. Um, I'm gonna EQ just a few little frequencies out. And for bass, I could go for a linear EQ, such as the stock Logic one, which is just, you know, a straight EQ, and it, that's fixed, basically. Fixed EQ is the best way I would describe that. But instead, I'm gonna go for a dynamic EQ, and there's only one, which is the Fab Filter. Q3. Waves do a good one as well, actually. Waves do a very good F6 plugin, which is significantly cheaper, so it is worth getting hold of that if you can't stretch to the Fab Filter one, which is quite expensive. Now, obviously, we're not doing any high-pass filtering on the bass, but let's have a quick sweep and see if there's any frequencies that are bothering me. Uh, there's a few low mids I'm picking up already. Now, I should say the lazy way of finding frequencies is just to do a sweep like this, um, so we're gonna do that. But really there's not much that's clashing, there's not many that's bothering me, so I'm gonna just put a dynamic EQ because there are some notes where about three or 400 was pulling my ear a little bit. And what this dynamic EQ is doing is only gonna pull out these frequencies in this band when they're particular prominent. So if there's notes where, say, 300 hertz is prominent, it's going to dip it down. And when there's notes playing that aren't prominent at 300 hertz, it's not going to reduce the EQ, which would typically thin the sound out with a traditional linear EQ. Now straight away I know a little bit I want I want a little bit more of 3k to give it some clarity some attack Maybe a little higher a bit wider Let's put a high pass on to get rid of some um of that string attack Yeah, there's some interesting harmonics going on up there, so let's put on quite a steep shelf. Just a subtle clean up there. And do we need a low pass? Let's try one for the sake of it. Again, with a really steep shelf. Down at maybe, I mean, technically we can't hear this low, but it'll still be there in the mix. Just about there. So the next thing to check is how this sounds with the kick drum. So let's go and solo the drum bus as well. I 
And you can hear a pesky guitar coming through there. That's because I've sent that to a... Uh, <laughs> I've sent that to the short snare bus. I should get rid of it. Hi, Michael. There we go. All right, that's sounding pretty fat to me, so I'm digging that as a good starting point. Next thing I'm going to do is go in and just try and get a balance between the three microphones tonally in terms of which one I prefer. So let's solo each of these bass mics and blend in the one we prefer the most. Let me know your suggestions. Let me know which ones you prefer the sound of while we go. Okay, I think that one's got the high mids that are resonating that are bothering me. Beautiful microphone. And, oh, sorry, and the DI. That's got a clean sound. So what I'm going to do with the DI actually is dirty that up a little bit later. Uh, so let's bring all these in together one by one. I'm going to blend the V47 in as we go. That's where all the sub end is. But we want a lot of that, but not too much. I'm going to stick there. And the DI sound now, I think we should play with the DI before we blend that in. Because what I want to do to the DI is bring in a Ampeg guitar amp. Now I did do this off uh, off camera. And I did a tiny bit of EQ, which was to remove some top end to get rid of the clicky sound. A few frequencies bothering me there. So what we're going to do is listen to this bass DI on its own with and without the EQ that I've imposed on. Just a few tweaks to bring out some low mids and some clicky top end without. Yes, that's what was bothering me. Let's get loads of that out. Excellent. Right, that's with the EQ. And then I've got this Ampeg. So the Universal Audio universe works that these can be used as what they call unison preamps, which if you have an Apollo interface, you'll know what I mean. If you don't, basically the technology means it physically reconfigures the gain staging and the impedance of the onboard preamps, which is remarkable technology and enables you to emulate loads of channel strips, uh, analog preamps and uh, guitar and bass cabs such as this one. And the Ampeg is probably my favorite bass cab that Universal Audio do. So I did do this off camera. I did this in a previous mix session. So let's have a listen to how that sounds. <laughs> and now I've decided I actually don't like that. Let's go for a brighter sound. And I'm kind of thinking I prefer this without the bass DI, uh, sorry, without the amp on. But I do want some distortion from somewhere, so I think we might add a saturator plugin somewhere. Let's see what Universal Audio also have for this DI channel in terms of amps. Is there a Galleon and Kruger G and K do some phenomenal bass amps? And let's just find a cheeky preset. Rock solid. Oh, hello. Okay. All right. I'm quite digging that rock type bass because the, the the other presets have more low end. However, the V47 mic is going to bring all that in. Let Yeah, way back, because I want some headroom to mix with. Okay, so going for about minus eight, that works for me. 
Let's blend those in with the other two microphones, and I'll bring this one in slowly. Ah, so they're so clean in comparison. All right, so that bass DI channel with the Galleon and Kruger amp head on it is really s providing most of the sound for me. What I'm hearing, though, when I bring in the 421 is some annoying frequencies. Let's get rid of these. Those were from a previous session. No plug-in. Uh, and I think we can probably go fixed EQ on this, but I'm hearing about 200 and a bit at 300 that I don't like. Let's try the just that mic on its own without the EQ again and with yeah that's the one yeah and all those mids that I don't like they can go out of this channel I think because there's plenty of those in the other two mic channels and there's still one more slightly bothering me where is that yeah six to eight hundred ish let's bin all that off just in this mic remember there are two of the mics All right, that's sounding thick and full. Now, what I could do, actually, is try the Galleon and Kruger bass amp on the bass bus. That could be interesting. Michael says, check the phase. That's not a bad shout. I That's a very good shout, actually. So how we should do the phase, we can do it manually by going zooming right in like this. Let's go to the beginning waveform. That's going to make you dizzy, isn't it? Okay, so let's go back to the beginning. Uh, and make those waveforms as big as we can by pressing command and plus. That command and minus shrinks the waveforms and makes them bigger in logic. So what we're looking for for perfect phase is all of these peaks lining up. And that's pretty much perfect. Oh, I mean, yes, they might be a fraction, not quite perfect, but you're not going to hear that, I don't think. If you are hearing that, you have magical ears. Anyway, credit to the person who recorded this, which just so happens to also be me. <laughs> um, right, what I wanted to do was try the G and K on the bass, didn't I? So I'm going to press Option and slide that over to copy it, but I'm going to mute it on the bass DI channel. And let's listen to how that sounds on all three microphones. So now we've got the Pro Q3 Dynamic EQ, and the UAD Galleon and Kruger amp head going onto the drum uh, bass bus. And that to me just doesn't work as well as it did before. So I'm gonna mute that, but bring it back on the DI channel. And I think that sounds great. Yeah, that's the combination I'm digging. I don't know how much compression we need on this either. However, obviously, we're going to try a little bit. And the LA-2A is a fantastic bass plugin, bass uh, compressor. Now, what I might do for the final uh, bounce is run this out through my analog gear and go through my WA-2A, which is a good compressor. However, for now, let's just run this through the LA Universal Audio LA 2A because this really has a sound. The Wave CLA 2A does do this quite well as well, but um, I, I think this is the one in terms of actually capturing the colour that the LA 2A used to create or still does if you can afford it. All right, LA 2A on the bass.
So the reason an LA-2A is a good compressor for bass is because it's an optical compressor, which if you know how an optical compressor works, it basically involves a light emitting diode and a light receiving sensor, which then does the compression or triggers the circuitry to do the compression. That's a very layman's explanation. But as a result, it's quite a slow compressor compared to a FET compressor or a VCA, which is a lot more immediate. So this is allowing the peak transients through, and then it's slightly squashing the rest of the signal, and obviously with the makeup gain, we're then pushing that back up. So for me on bass, this just sounds great. Let's A, B with and without. Now the keen ears amongst you will notice that when I turn that on, things went a bit funny and there were some phasing issues. That is to do with the Universal Audio's time alignment with plugins. So the Universal Audio stuff works with built-in DSP on the interfaces, so this doesn't use any of your computer's CPU power. Now as a result, it has to, and because of the power required to run all these plugins, they're so uh, high processing, um, they require so much processing, it has to then basically take into account the potential latency, which is still sub two milliseconds, and then realign stuff. Uh, so that's what that tiny little weird phasing session was. All right, how are we sounding with this with the drums? Yeah, it's sounding pretty full, but I want less bass overall. So there's two ways of uh, lowering the bass. I can now mix with the compressor on the bass bus, or I can mix with the channel fader. I actually like pushing the gain. So the output gain on the LA-2A is where the color is. So I'm going to take the channel fader back a little bit further. Let's go down to 10 for the sake of round numbers and just boost this a tiny bit, which brings in the color. And I think we're about there. Cool. And then obviously let's reference this in the context of a full mix. Now I want a bit more presence from that. I want a bit more attack. And the V47 is not the mic to get the attack from. So I'm gonna bring that in on the 421. And let's bring in some three to five K on that mic as well, which I believe I bought in on the overall bus. I did, but I want a bit more. I mean, the problem is really, there's not loads of upper frequencies in this, in any of these bass channels, which is um, also the engineer's fault, also my fault. Let's see if I can pull that out of the um, Galleon and Kruger though. Let's boost the high mids and the treble. Now it's on. All right, I still want some grit out of this. And I think the way I'm gonna do that is to bring in a parallel bus send. So to do that, we're gonna to go to our base send, our base bus, and let's send this to another bus, which is gonna be bus 30. And let's label that base parallel. I'm gonna send the output to zero which I've explained why I do that in a few videos. I just find that a bit easier to uh, 
send everything at Unity into the effects bus or the parallel processing buses and then use the channel fader on said bus to blend in the volume with the exception of backing vocals, which I'll explain when we get onto the backing vocals, which I need to record at some point. Uh, so what we're going to do is just bring that down so we don't blow our heads off and let's find some interesting sounding crunch distortion plugins. What have I got from Plugin Alliance? Not much. Ooh, I'll tell you what might be nice. There's the sub filter. We'll come back to that. Uh, no, no. Uh... Oh, I know just the plugin I need and I haven't installed it on my M1. And I don't have all the Waves plugins anymore for various reasons. Universal Audio, let's <laughs> stick with that. Uh, let's find a good saturation plugin. I want to go for a tape. Studer A800. Great tape. Now, what I want to do here is absolutely smash this just to get a really gritty, crunchy sound. I'm going to try a Tone Empire plugin after this as well. So let's just solo this parallel send. And fiddle with a preset. One that says bass, but that's not doing much. It's a bit farty, isn't it? All right, so that's giving the bass some body, but it's not giving it the crunch sound I want. Let's see if there's another preset. Um, saturated, sounds like a good one. Now we're talking. All right, that's kind of in the in the ballpark, but it's not quite what I'm looking for. So I'm going to mute that, and I'm going to go for a Tone Empire. If you've watched these live streams before, you'll uh, know that Tone Empire are particular favourites of mine. And we're going to pull up the Black QV2, which is a tube saturator plugin. And let's find a preset to start with, of which there are bass ones. Super fuzz. Let's go with that. And I saw Growl, we'll try that as well. And we'll tweak this as we go. All right, now we're talking. Whoa. The problem with this is you get all the that hissy top ends, so Let's EQ that before it goes into that growling plugin. And we could take a bit of the bottom end off as well. Get a higher shelf. Uh, something I've talked about a lot in these live streams is EQing your effects. This is always useful just to keep things clean and to focus the effects. You don't necessarily want tube saturation on all the low end and all the top end. You can be quite creative with how you use this. All right, so what I've done there is I've boosted the lows to about 150 and a reasonably wide Q curve on that and just boosted that at 3 dB. I've taken some of the saturation out of the mids as well because I don't want to boost those with the parallel stand and I've boosted the highs quite a bit, as you can see, and given it some air, low cut. Mm, we could take that down, obviously, because we're on bass. Now, obviously, on its own, this sounds ridiculous and it's possibly overkill. However, this is going to be in a parallel send, which we're going to blend in to thicken the sound. Now, what I really love doing with parallel sends like this is blending them in dynamically for different sections. So, for example, for the chorus, I might bring this in if I want the bass to have more growl. So instead of automating the bass bus dynamically, 
and changing the actual decibels in each section, I can just bring in more texture and more music, just to keep it more musical. Right, next thing, let's listen to that with the bass. Let's get rid of the solos, solo the bass channel, and then blend in this parallel saturated sound. It's quite clean on its own now, isn't it, in hindsight? So there's definitely too much. Now what I've noticed is there's certain notes when that distortion, that saturation is really coming through. Probably because I need the EQ before the plugin. So let's swap those around and see how that sounds. Let's get rid of those mids. Bring the high pass, low pass filter down. want to keep in the 3 to 5k region because that's where the click is. All right, I'm digging that. Let's mute. So without the parallel saturated send, and with, maybe that's a little too much. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Oh, let's try the different types. Yeah, prefer type B. And again, in the context of a mix. Okay, I need to go. There's two more tricks I'm going to try. I'm going to add loads of reverb to it. That'll, that'll solve all the problems. <laughs> Clearly not, uh, but I'm going to do a parallel, another parallel send, which is going to be a parallel compression send. Let's do that quickly now. Uh, and we're going to label that base parallel comp. And we're going to squash the life out of this and I'm going to go for, yes. Okay, so this is where I'm going to demonstrate the plugin of the week which is Universal Audio's API Vision Channel Strip. Like I said earlier, this is emulating an API analog desk. We have the 2112 preamp in there. We have the 215L sweep filter. We have the 235L gate and expander, the 225 compressor and limiter, and the 560 graphic EQ there. Oh no, this one's different. Excellent, we don't have the graphic EQ. We've got the parametric EQ, the 550 parametric EQ. That's different to the one on the UAD website. So let's go back into Logic and you can see the version I actually have. So this is just gonna be the parallel compression send, but we're gonna mix it with this week's plugin of the week, which is the API Vision Channel Strip from Universal Audio. Let's solo that one on its own. Presets, I did see a couple of cool ones, rock bass. That's introducing quite a bit of noise. That's interesting. So let's tweak the low pass. I'm gonna take that to 10. High pass, let's take that to 30 to clean. In fact, we could go higher with this because the idea of the parallel send is to focus the sound underneath the bass. So the lead channel of the lead bass bus is going to allow all the peaks, peak transients to go through. And this is gonna be a super compressed version of it just to fill out, add some girth to the sound. So let's, I'm not gonna bother with the gate, but I am gonna bother with the 
compressor and I want to really smash that. So we're gonna put that down to 50 millisecond attack, a really high ratio and we'll play with the threshold. Nice. Uh, and a faster attack, which I believe is fast, short and medium. So fast. All right, infinite compression ratio, and I want a hard knee. Not sure what that new slash old does. Sorry, if you're watching this on a mobile device, this is gonna be a tiny little uh, screen. I can't zoom in on OBS quickly at the moment. Uh, right, so we've, we've slammed this parallel bass end here. Let's put some EQ in. What do we need to EQ out? Um, probably not gonna EQ anything. Ooh, okay, so what that button's done is put the um, EQ before the dynamics, which is uh, obviously then causing the compressor to respond slightly differently, but I think I prefer it before. So this is EQ after compression. And before. So where we've boosted the low end there at 50 hertz, I can hear that, it's kind of giving that slightly flappy sound to the compressor. I prefer the overall sound, but not at that frequency, so let's back that off a touch. Yeah. So the low end with a compressor, this is something you have to watch out for on all instruments, but particularly the basses, the low end is likely to trigger a compressor before the top end. Uh, or at least if it's prominent in the bass like it is, it's definitely gonna trigger the compressor to squash down, which will give you that kind of flappy, almost ropey sound, whereas actually you might just want everything above 100 hertz to be compressed, which is where EQs come in and filtering. But we are playing with the bass, so I don't wanna do that. But just, for in, just out of interest, let's hear how this sounds if we squash the compressor, but play with the high pass filter. So as I raise this, the compressor will only be applied to the higher frequencies. And side chain is what I want for that. So the sidechain feature on this plugin is allowing the, all the frequencies to go through, but the compressor is only reacting above this high pass filter and below this low pass filter. So you can hear with it set to 600, you can hear the low end, that's coming through without the compressor doing anything. But above 600 is where the compression's kicking in. If I have it on nice. <laughs> there we go, like that. And you can hear as I dial it back, you're getting a bit of a better blend. I can't decide where I want the blend to be though. So that's everything getting compressed. That's a nice crossover point where the low end's going through and compressed. It's more obvious there. This kind of thing is gonna be mix dependent but I'm gonna play safe and just put it about 125. All right, does that make sense? This is a wicked sounding plugin. I tell you what, this sounds really good on his keyboards and I will definitely be bringing this up again when I do keyboards, which will be in two, two weeks time, two or three weeks. I'm away next week, but I have a video 
which is a clips video series that I'm doing from all of these live streams. I'm editing them down into concise tutorials. I've got one of those coming out on Saturday and one of them on Wednesday. Keep an eye out for those. They're just little uh, segments from all the other live streams that I thought make good standalone individual tutorials. And then two weeks time, we'll do the keys, all the guitars, but either way, we'll probably bring this plugin back in. So I don't want to do too much more with that. We could distort this as well. Just for the sake of trying, I am going to try the Universal Audio uh, Empirical Labs Distressor on the bass because this is just a phenomenal plugin. So let's get rid of the API and try the Distressor. 60 hertz fuzz, that could be good. I think I prefer the API. Which one do you prefer, guys? Let's make it a fair fight and put the output on both to the same. API. I think that's so musical sounding. Yeah, not quite doing it for me, that one. I'm digging the API. Mm, there's a lot of top end coming in through that. A lot of top end buzz. Now I'm wondering if that's from the API preamp. This is supposed to emulate the analog preamps of old, of the old API two, two on two Ls. I'm just wondering if that's doing a bit too good a job of emulating the circuit noise. So that's with... No, hang on, that's not right one. So let's dial in this parallel compression send. So what I also need to do is bring up my... I'm going to press read. So the bass parallel. Let's relabel that bass parallel um, saturation so I don't forget which parallel is what. That we had blended in quite a way back and let's bring in the compression, the parallel compress send. Oh, that is girthening the sound. <laughs> I'm digging that. I think there's a little bit it's too hot in the low mids though. And in the context of a mix, I'm kind of digging how that's sounding and I don't want this live stream to go on for ages. So let's do a rundown of what we've done. So I level matched each microphone. And as you can see, there's a little bit less of the V47. The V, the, the, the MD421 on the Aguilar bass cab was capturing the whole frequency range and a bit more of the top end. The V47 is a condenser mic, and that was placed quite close, so that was predominantly picking up the low end. And I've scooped out some mids in the 421. And then the bass DI, I've EQ'd slightly to get rid of some resonance, some clicky top end. And then we put that through a Galleon and Kruger bass cab to give it a nice growl. And then on the bass, what I've done then is sent all three of these to a bass bus. And what I actually did first before I processed any of those was did a Pro Q Dynamic EQ on that to remove some frequencies that I don't like and to add some 3K just to control the top end. Yes, you might be thinking, why would I roll off uh, any bass on a bass instrument? But the reality is we can't really hear much below that and it is just rumbling noise if you leave it in. And we don't need too much in the top end because this particular amp and bass combination wasn't recording too much above about one kilo anyway. And then we've compressed that with an LA-2A, 
which sounds great, allows the peak transients to come through and then smooths the rest of the sound out. And the LA-2 makes bass sound really full and thick, which I really like. We have then added in two parallel sends, one of them being a parallel saturation, for which I've used the Tone Empire Q Black QV2. And if you haven't used Tone Empire plugins yet, they are possible. They're my favorite plugins, I think, besides Universal Audios. Uh, they sound great. They're available on a 15 day trial. Uh, and they're very reasonably priced as well. Uh, and this is adding some distortion like saturation, which I preferred over the amplifier. But we've just got it blended in a little bit because that was becoming quite obvious. And then the second parallel send on the bass we have is the parallel compression where I've showcased this week's plugin of the week, which is the Universal Audio API Vision Channel Strip. Let's have a listen to the bass on its own and bring each in these. Let's have a listen to the bass on its own and bring these in individually as we go. Cool. I think that's sounding pretty full. There is something still bothering me though in the bass. Let me identify which channel it's on. It's not that one. It's this one. So I want to take a few more low mids out of the bass there, and there's a, something higher up, one or two K. Bit lower, 900. It's just peaking up every now and then. So I should dynamic EQ that, but I can't really be bothered right now. Okay, so let's have a listen to those in context. Full bass bus with parallel sends. Now there's a lot of noise coming out of this um, vision strip. Where would that be coming from? Whoa, so that's really emulating the old analog sound there, which uh, mm, I'm not sure that's gonna work for me. So let's try the Brainworks SSL channel strip. So the THD you can manually adjust with this plugin, which is pretty good. That's the natural harmonic distortion in the circuits. But obviously I don't want any of that in in this instance at least. Um, we had quite a lot of compression, didn't we? So let's smash the ratio to infinity. Let's play with the threshold and try and get this uh, slow release, full in the mix, high pass filter off, release percentage, that's a, uh, how quick it's released. And um, we want a fast attack. Take some mids out. Let's boost some low end, about 50. Yep, okay, so I've got, I've not side chained the dynamics there, which means all the EQ has taken effect, but it is taking effect before the compressor's kicking in. Do we need to add some top end? Remember, this is the parallel send. Mm. 
that's adding some grit. And if I were to press the shelf, that would turn into a shelf or a bell. It's currently on shelf. Let's try that as a bell. I think I prefer that as a shelf. And do we need to do anything to the low mids? Probably not. No, that's all good for me. Uh, let's just back that reduction off. I don't need a gate. We don't need an expander. Limit that to 10, 12K. That's getting rid of the noise. So in comparison, the API is noisy. Compared to the Brainworks SSL channel strip. Now, obviously, they're EQ'd differently. Which one do we prefer? API? Or Brainworks? Just by the very fact that that is quieter, I, I have to go for that. I don't want all that noise in the mix. There will be a place for that, but not on this particular instrument on this track. All right, that's a meaty sounding bass in the mix. Nice. The next thing I need to do to make sure the kick and the bass are blending well is I want to go into the bass bus EQ. Let's pull that up there. And I want the drum bus. Maybe I'll go to the kick bus. Didn't do much to the kick bus EQ. Drum bus EQ. And just compare because a great way to get the kicks and the bass sat together is to take one frequency out of one and put it into the other or vice versa. So for example, on the drum bus here, I've got a bit at 90 hertz there. So let's dip a little bit at 90 here with a very small cue, similar to the one we had there, which kind of looks like that. And then we're gonna do the opposite. So we're, let's exaggerate this a touch. So we're plus, let's go 3 dB, and we're gonna go down. So they're not doing the opposite there, which should help them sit in the mix a bit better. So you can hear the bass, the kick drums kind of disappearing there. However, I prefer the sound of 90 hertz in the bass guitar, so I'm going to take that out of the kick, see how that sounds. I think I prefer it that way around. However, obviously we're losing a bit of attack on the kick and I need an extra cue point. And this is where Logic plugins are limited. I want more of a cue point, more cue points in the whole mix. The whole idea of this track for me is to keep it as organic as possible. There's no samples, although the keen eyes may have noticed this snare track. However, this is not a sample track. I'm using that to trigger a reverb, which I explained in the drum episode last week, if you want to check that out. That's a very interesting concept. Um, all right, let's go for a different section in the song, because there is a section which is uh, pretty mental where the bass goes crazy. Here. Yeah. 
Now in that section, I'm hearing some clash between the bass and the guitars. Yeah, so there's a lot of low end going on in these guitars. Which in isolation sounds great. However, it is clearly clashing with the bass. So I'd be tempted to move that low pass on the guitar bus up a little bit. I'm always hesitant about doing that. There's the problem. I had boosted the low end. <laughs> let's not do that. So let's move the high pass on these up a touch on both these solo guitar rhythm channels. I only did it on one. Oh, I remember that. I did it on one to get some separation between the other. As you can see, they're EQ'd slightly differently to give it some separation. Uh, so let's move this guitar bus EQ high pass filter back. So at that point in the song, this is where I want loads of growl from the bass guitar. So this is where I would bring up this um, parallel saturated send. So say we're at minus 15 the whole way through for the sake of round numbers. Don't mix by round numbers, but for the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna bring this up in this section. <laughs> So at bar 59, on my parallel bass saturated send, on that slide at beat four, I wanna bring in loads of saturation. So I'm gonna start it at beat three, so this starts fading, no, just before beat four, and then boost that to, I don't know, let's just go mental. And for this section only, we're gonna bring in that parallel send to create a texture, some grit, some dynamics. Oh, pressed the wrong button, my bad. Let's give it a run up as well so we can hear what we're doing. So when that's coming forward, there's a bit too much on the mids there. So I'd be tempted to, I mean, you could even automate the EQ at that point. Oh, it's getting a little bit crazy. So let's just widen the 300s that were bothering me. Let's take that back a little bit. Maybe that forward a bit. So this is the parallel send we're bringing in just for this section. Now I've exaggerated it by boosting it 10, B, 10 decibels, but you get the idea. want a bit more fuzz out of that. So I could go in and put a distortion pedal or something, you know, on another parallel send, or I could just change this plugin and make it really fuzzy. What have I done before? I've used the Baby Audio Parallel Aggressor plugin, which is quite nice for a really heated, saturated sound. I did that on my last track, Bright Lights, actually, and I did exactly that. I automated the send in and out, which works quite well. You'd never notice it, but you'd notice it if it wasn't there. So that's what I would do for that section. And obviously I could keep that dynamic then till the end or wait till we get to the end of the section, which is here and then take it back again. Will you take me by surprise? And I'd probably leave it in cause then we're into the last chorus and everything's boosting a bit dynamically. Right. I think that's it. That's all I'm gonna do for the bass at the moment. Um, it all sounds decent in context, I think. Stay tuned in two weeks' time. Oh, sorry. 
In two weeks' time, I will be mixing the guitars or the keys. Haven't decided yet. The keys sound great. And then the following week, so two weeks' time, because I'm away next week, will be keys or guitars. And the week after that will be more keys or guitars. And then the week after that, I'll probably get into these strings. Let's just solo these because these sound so good. Thank you. 